Hi, so now we're in the kitchen wing of the house. We started out in sort of the living quarters and worked our way through the salons. And now we're in the kitchen wing where a lot of the families probably didn't do as much of the work. These are very well-to-do families and they had servants and help and things like that to take care of things. But if you look behind, in front of me is the butler's pantry, which is a very odd sort of diamond-shaped, uh, triangular-shaped room where they would have kept all of their china, their silverware, their crystal, and all of those lovely dishes and things that allow them to set up the tables like we have set up right now to entertain their guests when they're in town. This portion of the room is, is sort of a functional kitchen part, if you will. If you notice, this is one of the two original sinks. It's lined in zinc. And this room also has a 50-pound ice chest, which wouldn't have been the Laphams. That would have come a little bit later. Probably the Pattersons would have used that. And then a stove, a coal-burning stove, which, again, a little bit later period than Laphams, but would have been used by families like the uh, Pattersons and that coal-burning stoves are much smaller than wood-burning stoves simply because coal takes up less space than, let's say, logs and pieces of wood. And then the little room in the back there is where you would have had your cold storage, your canned goods, sort of your non-perishables, if you will. And the room back this way, this hallway in this room back here, is sort of a, you call it not really a mud room, but a room where sort of the messier parts of food preparation might take place, or dealing with coal and wood and, and chopping up vegetables and things like that. And then beyond that was actually a porch area. And all of these rooms, once again, have, you know, the doors and the windows are slightly off kilter, but they all have a door to the outside. And part of that was Mr. Lapham's unique architectural style, but it was also attributable for the staff being able to come and go and take care of the parties that are going on and preparing the food and, the, and clearing the dishes and things like that without actually going through the dinner party or having to intrude, if you will, in the dinner party. And that was sort of typical of that time period. Hi, so now we're in the backyard of the Lapham Patterson property, in the back of the Lapham Patterson house. And you'll really get a good chance now to see the sort of horseshoe shape layout of the house that I mentioned before. This was the sort of living quarters that we started out in, and this was the kitchen side that we just ended up in. And then above us would be a second floor, which just has two bedrooms. But if you notice on each alcove upstairs, there's three doors. So each bedroom has, each one of those alcoves has a door to the bedroom, a door to a maid's room, in a door to get back down the stairs inside the house. And of course, some of that is Mr. Lapham's eccentricities and the design of this unique Victorian house. And some of it was due to the way that the people who stayed here, lived here, um, how their servants and helps got a, a servant and help um, staff would get around in the house. So they're there to sort of take care of folks. Uh, a lot of times people are traveling with small babies and families and they need help. Uh, maybe they need a blanket at night or they need some, you know, to get some water or things like that. With those three separate doors, your help, your maid, your nanny, whatever it was, could come and help you in your bedroom, go back and stay in the maid's room because that's where they stayed, and then you can go use the third door and go up and down the stairs if they needed to, say, get back down to the kitchen or come back outside for some reason. So even though there's hot and cold running water, it's a very modern house, sometimes you still have to go around and do things outside and get to the kitchen. So those are very unique layouts. And then the door over here on the, this one porch on the side leads up to the third floor. The third floor is that entire section at the top that you see there's kind of, there's windows on the sides but not really a facing this way. And that was the, um, the, the ballroom. Uh, there, were billiards there was a billiard table up there. Probably they played music, smoked cigars, hung out, did all sort of recreational things. It's not that the men and women, again, women weren't allowed, but probably the men spent the majority of the time up there socializing and doing that sort of thing. And even when you visit, when you visit the house, by the way, you do get to go to all three floors, all the rooms, and when you go to that top floor, I, that, just as I said before, even the third floor has a door to the outside. Actually, it has two doors to the outside. One of them was a door to a sort of a porch area, which we don't go out on because that's not very safe. And the other one was a door to this outside near the chimney where there's a pulley system up there, and that's how they hoisted up large pieces of furniture. So if you could see on any of the earlier footage, very narrow stairwells around this house, very short stairs and steep stairs, and there's no way you're going to get a billiards table or a piano or a couch or anything up those stairs. So if you see the pulley system all the way at the top, that was designed to get furniture all the way up to the third floor. So again, you do visit the entire house when you uh, go on a guided tour. And from the fr in the front, I don't know if hopefully you notice there's some uh, unique architectural features like fish scale siding, which is a classic Victorian um, architectural style, sort of the, the layered pieces of siding that look indeed like fish scales. And there's still a lot of 
asymmetrical things. If you look back towards the house right here and you notice there's four windows, the Queen Anne window and the door beneath, but they are in no way aligned properly or they're not even, they're not symmetrical. And again, that's not bad workmanship. That was intentional on Mr. Lapham's part. That's not a classic Victorian thing either. It's not so much that when you look up Victorian architecture, you see asymmetrical, uneven doorways and windows. Now that's Mr. Lapham being his, uh, adding his unique character to this house. And the gingerbread cutout molding, uh, excuse me, railings that you see on the uh, patios, the alcoves upstairs, and you see them around the front of the house, that is classic Victorian. Um, off again, called gingerbread, not, you know, so, so somewhat resembles when you're making a gingerbread house and you would put sort of those accents on the outside of it. So this is a very large property. It actually extends all the way back to the street in back of us. Mr. Lapham and his friend from Chicago originally owned the whole block that we're on. Now, of course, some other folks own the rest of it. But it was a very sizable property. Mr. Lapham had back here a stable, an aviary, an orchard, very much a naturalist. He very he enjoyed plants and animals and all those kinds of things. And he was very philanthropic too. So he contributed a lot to Thomasville. And whether it was the projects he had here on the property or giving money to start um, parks and opera houses and things like that, he was actually a huge benefit to Thomasville in its recreational components, in its tourism. And of course, by leaving this house behind because this is an absolute gem in the architectural and cultural landscape of this town one of a kind, it is a one of 48, I believe, national landmarks in the state of Georgia. And it is unique in its own right and is really worth visiting. If you're interested in architecture, if you're interested in history, if you're interested in house construction in the Victorian period or in the late 1800s, there are lots of components about this house from its plumbing system to its gas lighting, to how the food was prepared, how the kitchen was laid out that are unique to its time period.